like the third time I'm recording this, so I need some extra whiskey. Today we're going to talk about holiday gift ideas for the booze lover in your life. Whether it's someone who likes sipping on whiskey or rum or whatever, uh, or someone who likes making cocktails at home, I think these are really great gifts that they would totally enjoy. Or you can just always give them to yourself because that's a thing too. So this here is a travel Glen Cane glass case. So Glencane glasses are these. They're really made for sipping spirits so that you really get the most out of the nose of it. These are really popular glasses for anyone who likes sipping on spirits. And this is a travel case for it. So this is made out of like a hard uh, leatherette type of material and it holds two Glencane glasses. So if you open it up, you'll see there's like this velvety soft material here and you know, you, I have a whiskey in mine, but you would just put an empty glass in here and would fit two of them. So for anyone who travels a lot and also likes sipping on spirits, I think this is a wonderful gift idea. You can always like wrap up your Glen King glasses in like a fuzzy sock, but I'm always a little bit paranoid that it's going to shatter and get all over my clothes. So uh, I think this is a great alternative. And these are slightly pricey and maybe slightly unnecessary, but I think those are the things that make the best gifts, things that you wouldn't normally buy for yourself or you know justify otherwise. So speaking of blank hang glasses, uh, another great idea is to get a customized blank hang glass. So here you'll see the one I have um, has my name on it in the script. And my friend Ben Barrel Rays actually makes these and he has his own Etsy shop. And you can also probably find other makers who does glass etchings. So I actually got two of these for just around $20, $25, which I think is a great price considering the glass itself usually sells for around $8 to $10. I just have something simple. It's just like my name in a script. But if you also have something like a logo or an image that you would want to get etched in, that can also be done. And I think these are just a great idea to have something personalized that you know is also very useful. So one way to combine it, you know, just get a couple of these personalized glasses, put them in one of these travel cases, wrap it up, and just stick it under the tree. So speaking of whiskey, I mentioned I had some whiskey in here, and what I have in this glass is actually this. So this is the Lagavulin 9 year from the new Game of Thrones limited edition release from Diageo. So Diageo is the big spirits conglomerate that owns a lot of the big brands and they come out with a release of 8 single malt scotch whiskies in anticipation of the last season of Game of Thrones next spring. So this one is Lagavulin from House Lannister and you'll see there's a family crest on the front which is super cool and it comes in this really cool um, tin. So many scotches come in tins and this one here just basically has a family crest and uh, some information about why they chose this particular distillery to represent the Lannisters. And like I said, there's eight of these. So I actually am kind of a sucker and bought into all the marketing and I picked up four of them. So the other ones I have here, one, this one is the Cardew Gold Reserve for House Targaryen. And the Cardew Gold Reserve, I believe, is a whiskey that's already available on the market uh, in a non-limited edition packaging, and they just kind of threw the sleeve and the packaging on it as part of the series. But some of the whiskeys that they are launching as part of this release are brand new products that aren't available anywhere else. So then the next one I have here is the Kleinlish Reserve. So this is House Tyrell. And I believe Kleinlish normally bottles a 14 year at a lower uh, percentage, like 40, 43%. And this one is actually bottled at 51%. So this is a unique release just, for, uh, just as part of the series. So I'm really excited to try that as well. The other one I have here is the Dawini Winter's Frost. So this is House Dark and it kind of plays on the cold weather of Winterfell. So of course it has Family Crest on here. And this one I believe is also available outside of the special edition packaging. So I think these are a fantastic gift for anyone who loves whiskey and loves Game of Thrones. Plus you'll have something to sip on when the series finally launches next spring. And I think it's totally a valid gift for yourself, which is 
why I picked up all four of these. I might pick up one more, which is the Oban and the Night's Watch. Uh, it comes in a really black bottle. It's kind of gimmicky, but um, I... what can I say? I think I'll need to host some Game of Thrones watch parties with whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> life who loves whiskey or rum or brandy and you're not really sure what to get them because you don't know what they already have or don't have or you maybe you don't know the particular style of spirit that they like uh, one really good idea I think is to give them a bottle of Armagnac Armagnac is more of a lesser known spirit it's a grape brandy that is made in France it's kind of similar to cognac but it's made in a slightly different way using grapes from a different region and different techniques the good thing about Armagnac is that it's lesser known and there's not as much marketing that goes into it and as a result you can find really amazing prices for really fabulous spirits. So unlike spirits like scotch and bourbons and such that are oftentimes really marked up because of the large consumer demand for it, Armagnac can usually be found for much more reasonable prices that are more uh, reflective and in line with the cost of production. Armagnac is still very much like a cottage industry where the majority of the producers are just small family farmers who are making the spirit for like their family, their friends, and their nearby community. And it's more of like a way of life as opposed to like a commercialized spirit that is aimed for sales and profit and such. Some of these families may have their own stills where they're distilling the brandy but a lot of times there's also just like a traveling distiller who comes around once a year or so with the portable still and they will distill the wine that the families are producing and provide them with the distilled spirit that the families will then age for decades. So as a result, you get really amazing prices on Armagnac that you don't really find in other spirits. For example, this bottle here of this 25 year old Boss Armagnac is around 60 to $80. I got a, a total wine uh, and it is absolutely fantastic. And where are you gonna find a whiskey that is 25 year old for 60 to $80? I don't think so. So I think this is a totally underrated spirit and it is absolutely delicious and I think anyone who enjoys sipping on the finer aged spirits can really appreciate Armagnac and it's one that they may not have been exposed to previously. Another interesting thing about Armagnac is that they are oftentimes bottled under certain vintages from the year that the grapes were grown. You may know that in wine the grape growing seasons vary year to year depending on how much rain you get or how much temperature fluctuation there is and that produces different characteristics in the grapes. So as I mentioned, Armagnac is made from grapes. As a result, they also adopt the idea of vintages where the end result is very much dependent on the particular grapes that you started out with. I think if there's a special year in your life, maybe it's like a birthday or an anniversary, you can find a really fantastic uh, bottle of Armagnac that is from that vintage. This one here is a 1988 Bar Armagnac. It is actually bottled this year to 2018, so this is 30 years old. This one costs just over $100 for a 30 year old spirit, and that is a fantastic price. If you've never tried Armagnac or really heard of it even, I think this is a great time to explore and it makes a fantastic gift idea for family, friends, or, you know, again, yourself. <laughs> trendier spirits nowadays that's been getting more popular is mezcal. Mezcal is sometimes regarded as a smoky tequila, but there's really so much more that goes into mezcal beyond that. Like tequilas, mezcal is also made from the agave plant, which I think is a super cool plant. A lot of times it takes many, many years or even decades to mature. One of the key differences, in my opinion, that really distinguishes mezcal from tequila is the community of small artisan producers that are making the spirit according to centuries of tradition for how it's always been made. Of course, you can always find artisanally made tequilas as well, which from the ones I've tasted have been absolutely incredible. Uh, but I think that a large portion of the tequila industry, especially the ones focused on consumer sales, are more volume focused and more commercialized, so oftentimes you don't get as much of the artisan craft that goes into it. Whereas mezcal, I feel like at this point in time, it's not really at a point yet where there is a lot of industrial, you know, ma uh, mass produced mezcals. There's a couple of brands, but for the most part, the ones that you'll find are very artisan and small batch. 
So a couple of the ones I have here, this one is the um, Del Maguire Wild Papalome, and then this one is the Alibus um, Ensemble. So these are two of my favorite mezcals that I own at the moment. This one is incredible. It is so unique. It has these rich flavors of earth and mushroom olive leather that is just unlike any other spirit. And this was like a life-changing experience for me to know that a mezcal or any type of spirit could taste so earthy and rich. On the other hand, this one here is an ensemble, which means that it is made from a mix of or blend of different agave species. This one indicates that it's 80% acidine and 20% by cliche. And also mentions the artisan methods. Uh, so it's roasted in fire pits, smashed in electric mills, fermentation with native yeast, double discontinuous distillation, copper distills, etc. So a lot of times with these uh, more artisan, small batch mezcals, they are very transparent about the exact process and ingredients that went into the creation of the spirit. I wouldn't necessarily recommend only these two, and I think there is a great vast variety that I haven't even explored fully. But I think um, if you find one of the higher end or slightly more smaller batch mezcals that are out there, you'll really get to appreciate some of the really wide range. Another great idea if you don't want to go the mezcal or armagnac route is a bottle of aged rum. So this one here is the Appleton 21 year and it is a Jamaican rum that is one of my favorite rums in my collection of over like 60 different bottles. So one great thing about aged rum is that it's oftentimes made and aged in the Caribbean. Compared to places like Scotland or Kentucky where it gets super cold in the winters, uh, in the Caribbean you really get a hot climate year round. As a result of that, you end up with almost like a rapid aging of the spirit where it's much quicker for the spirit and wood interactions to happen in a shorter amount of time compared to those cold work climates. Um, so for example, a 21 year old rum here would actually be equivalent to a scotch that's aged in Scotland for like 40 years or double that time. You get a lot more evaporation in the barrel over the years and with a rum, over 10 years you could lose maybe like 60% of your original liquid volume, whereas with the scotch, over those 10 years you may only lose like 20% or so. So all in all, I think aged rum is a fantastic bang for your buck. One of the trickier things about buying aged rum is that I think there's oftentimes a lot more marketing tricks that go into it. A rum might be marketed with numbers such as 12 or 18 or 25, when in actuality the rum inside is not actually that old. So you have to be a little bit more careful when purchasing rums to make sure that you're getting what you think you're getting. That said, I think the Appleton 21 is really the way to go if you're looking for a longer aged rum, and with this you are actually getting what you think you're getting. Maybe you're looking for a gift idea for someone who isn't necessarily just sipping spirits neat and they really like experimenting with cocktails. One good idea to consider is buying them a bottle of interesting liqueur. So liqueur is essentially like a sweetened flavored spirit. So I'll show you a couple of my favorite liqueurs that I think are super versatile and really amazing. So the first ones that I have here are these by Giffard. So one is a grapefruit liqueur and the other one's a banana liqueur. So I think that Giffard makes one of the best fruit liqueurs on the market that you can find anywhere. And I absolutely love both of these. So this one tastes like very fresh grapefruit. It's more the flavor that you get from the really aromatic grapefruit oils as opposed to like the tarts or bitter fruit inside. And it is absolutely lovely. You can just, you know, add a little bit of this in a glass of champagne and it's delicious. Or you can actually, you know, mix it into more complex cocktails as well. And uh, this banana one is also amazing. So if you're a little bit nervous about banana liqueurs, um, I'll just say that this one was life-changing for me. I had previously bought a bottle of like 99 bananas, which is a cheap banana liqueur early on in my cocktail life, and that one haunted my for a few years, and I was like absolutely no to any banana liqueur. And then finally I heard everyone rave about this, and I picked it up, and it just tastes like warm banana bread uh, that is just so lovely and so balanced. Another one that I would recommend is this bottle of Ancho Reyes. So Ancho Reyes is actually a liqueur that is made from dried chilies, Ancho chilies, and it also has flavors like cinnamon and cacao. So essentially you end up with a spirit that is just very dark and complex and it can go well with you know aged spirits as well as non-aged spirits. 
But you can just add a splash of this in like a margarita or you can add some in your old fashioned. And this is not super spicy. It adds more of the rich flavors of chili as opposed to the spice. There's a little bit of spice, but it's not too bad. Another liqueur that I really love is a bottle of Pomp and Whimsy. This is a gin liqueur that has a base of gin, but it's further enhanced by a lot of different fruits and flowers. So you end up with this very unique flavor that is just fantastic with some champagne or in a punch or just really simple drinks. And uh, you can also just drink it on its own with some ice. It is not overly sweet and it's 30%, so it's really lovely just over an ice cube with a citrus twist, or you can add it in more complex cocktails. If you're willing to splurge a little bit, one of my favorite things is the Winter Smith clear ice set. So if you're making cocktails at home and you really want that crystal clear ice, one way you can get that is by using like a mini ice cooler and you can look up a lot of tutorials for how to do that. For me, my freezer space is pretty treasured and this is a great um, small size option to get absolutely clear ice. So Winter Smith is a little bit more expensive, will run you probably in the $100 plus price range, but it works flawlessly. So here is an example of the size. It fits directly in the freezer. It doesn't take up too much room. And uh, you can get like circular or cube molds. And I just have this ice that I've made here. I'm just gonna open it up and show you what it looks like. Whoa. In here, you have this insulated cover and inside you have this rubber silicone mold. And this is the square one. So I've just made this one recently. You basically just fill it with water and you stick it in the freezer. So I can just pull this out and you'll see that here it makes an absolutely crystal clear ice cube. So just stick this in an old fashioned and it makes for an amazing like at home cocktail experience. You can also get other shapes that they have. So in the set that I have, you, it also makes these spheres. So you can get like an absolutely clear cocktail sphere. They also have some newer sets that will produce smaller cubes or like rectangular uh, ice. So uh, I think the Wintersmith system works absolutely flawlessly and I highly recommend it and I love mine. For someone who is just getting into cocktails, one of my highest recommendations for finding a place to start is with cocktail books. So I did a whole video on my cocktail book collection that I recommend you checking out if you're interested in more information about books. But I would say my top three recommendations are these. The first one is the bar book. So this is all about techniques, which is something that you don't normally get just by looking up recipes online. So it teaches you the hows and whys of doing things and making cocktails in a certain way that I think for like a home bartender is super important. The other book I would recommend is this one. This is the Death & Co book. So this one has a combination about techniques, bar setup, recommended bottles, as well as ingredients. And this is a beautiful book that you can just kind of put on your coffee table. It has this like nice velvety material and it looks really great and it's full of beautiful photos. So I think this one's a fantastic book for anyone starting out. The last one that I have here is this one. This is a Smuggler's Cove book and this is what got me into the world of tiki and the world of rums. This is also a beautifully illustrated and photographed book. And it also has a bunch of amazing recipes. So I won't talk too much about these now and you can check out the other video if you're interested, but I would say that cocktail books are really the way to go for someone starting out. For someone just getting started with making craft cocktails at home, one of the critical things that is needed and very useful is proper tools. So you can get just a set of these that has like a combo of tins as well as a strainer and a uh, jigger for measuring. So I think these are just the basics and would be a great accompaniment to a cocktail book for someone just looking to get started. Another really fun idea as a stocking stuffer are these metal uh, cocktail stirrers or swizzle sticks. So these are from Grider Co. and they have an Etsy shop where I got these from. 
And uh, these are all handmade metal forged stirs. So there's a lot of detail on these. For example, this one is like an octopus on a barrel. Uh, it's actually, I think it's like some type of a mystical sea creature, but it's really cool. Uh, this one is just the Moai um, tiki head. This one is like a harpoon and this one's a skull. So uh, they also come in like the short length with the spike, which is more like a cocktail pick, as well as the longer length, which is more like a cocktail stir. So these are awesome. They're handmade and they're really good quality and I highly endorse these. Another great idea for like the home bar enthusiast in your life is a bitter set. So bitters are essentially like the spices and seasonings of the cocktail world and they can really take a lackluster cocktail from meh to amazing. The most common bitters are probably like Angostura or Peixotes, but there are a lot of artisan brands that are making uh, bitters for all different flavors. And oftentimes they are sold in sets which allow you a way to try a lot of different ones at once. So the ones that I have right here are by the Bitter Sling and these come in a set in a metal tin. I don't have packaging anymore because I threw it away. But um, basically you get a variety of different flavors. You have this Malagasy chocolate, uh, this Kensington aromatic, uh, grapefruit and hops, and uh, plum and root beer. So these are fantastic and a little bit will go a really long way. So even these 30 milliliter bottles should last you like a really long time because you only need to use a couple drops at once. In addition to that one, I also have these by Bitter Cube. So these also come in a set and you know, there's just a large variety of different flavors that you can try out. Uh, Jamaican, cherry bark vanilla, blackstrap molasses, etc. So another one of my favorites is these Honest John ones. So these are made by a small brand in Utah and they are absolutely delicious. I have black walnut, aromatic, Santa Korea, coffee and cherry, grapefruit, orange, etc. So you can find these like many cocktail bitters packaged individually as a, just a small dropper bottle or you can also find them in sets which come with like five or six different ones that you can try. So outside of these, the other ones that I've seen that are popular that I don't own, uh, I think the Bitter Truth puts out a couple of different packs as well as Scrappy's Bitters. So I've tried those bitters separately and they're all fantastic and I think getting them in a set is the way to go. So another really great idea that's also eco-friendly are these uh, metal straws. So I try to avoid using plastic straws and I really hate paper straws because they tend to disintegrate really quickly. So metal for me is the way to go. And you can just really get these on Amazon. There's a ton of different variety of different styles. You can get the ones with like the curved necks. Uh, you can get like colorful iridescent ones that are really beautiful. You can get copper ones, you know, that are straight. Um, you can get these like extra large ones that are, you know, for boba or if you just want to drink extra quickly. You can get the ones that have a little spoon on the top. I think these are like julep straws or something. You can use them to like mash whatever limes or you have on the bottom of your glass. And then they also come in different lengths. Of course, you can get these short ones that I have here if you're drinking out of like an old fashioned sized glass. Uh, you can get the small ones that have the spoon on it, but basically there's a huge variety. I even have some glass ones here. Basically, these are a great eco-friendly option and really fun to have for anyone who likes using straws. The next thing that I have here is kind of a stocking stuffer and it's not necessarily cocktail specific, but it is this pineapple pour. So if you're someone who likes making drinks at home and usually can't be bothered to juice a full pineapple, this is a game changer. So this is the OXO stainless pineapple core and basically what it is is you chop off the top of a pineapple, you put this part in the core and all you have to do is twist this as this goes down into the pineapple. So at the end you pull it out and what you end up with are these ringlets of pineapple that are already sliced and you can just remove. And this has been an absolute life changer for me in terms of pineapples. Whereas previously I would never buy pineapple because I didn't want to deal with cutting off the skin and all that. With this, now I sometimes buy pineapples. This one retails for maybe around $20 because it is stainless steel. And they do have cheaper ones that are plastic, but I figure I would just invest in one that was gonna last me like 20 years. 
uh, and I absolutely love this. I love all the OXO products. They are all very well made and really take into account the small things uh, in terms of the ergonomics. So if you know someone who likes pineapples and might not have one of these at home, you should definitely get that because it is a total life changer for me. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it gave you some ideas for gifts for the holiday season. If you like this video and want to support my channel, make sure you like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye! Where are they from? Winterfell? What was it called? Winterfell? You know, when the season pretty near... Ah! My legs are asleep.